these dancers are doing a modern day version of an old russian folk dance They're performing it in a city that's the capital of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Moscow. Moscow is the Soviet Union's political, industrial, and research center. It's a big city with more than eight million residents. It's also the capital of the Soviet's 15 republics. The Soviet Union is the world's largest country, stretching across large parts of Eastern Europe and Asia. Moscow lies in the West, or the European part of the country. Moscow, when it was still a village, was first named in the year 1147 in a letter from Prince Yuri the Long-Armed. The city was built on a hill overlooking the Moscow River. After a few years, a great wooden wall was built around the city, creating the first Kremlin, the Russian word for fort. Today, Moscow is one of the most popular tourist spots for the country's more than 290 million citizens. They come from every republic, even though the journey is long and expensive. To accommodate them, large modern hotels have been built. Since the days of Prince Yuri the Long-Armed, the heart of Moscow has been the Kremlin. But at the end of the 1400s, the original wooden wall was torn down, replaced by a sturdier wall of red brick. Inside the Kremlin, great treasures and much of Russia's history are being carefully preserved. Cathedrals with golden domes were once the Tsar's private churches. Today, the Kremlin is open to all, and those cathedrals have been turned into museums. Behind the clock tower of Ivan the Great rests the so-called Tsar Bell. It weighs 200 tons and is probably the biggest bell in the world. Another giant example of the Russian art of casting is the Tsar Cannon, a monster weapon that has never been fired. Apparently, it was built as a scare tactic. What enemy would dare attack a city which had a cannon that big? Still, enemies have tried to capture this city, to no avail. Moscow became the turning point for would-be conquerors like Napoleon and Hitler. The Kremlin today is more than a cradle of history. It's the seat of the Soviet government. Within the Kremlin walls is the High Soviet, the Communist Party's highest decision-making body, the one that actually controls the Soviet Union. Outside the Kremlin Wall lies Red Square, another famous site, and a mecca for tourists. It is here, in Red Square, that the superpower Soviet Union holds its military parades displaying its might for all the world to see. In the middle of the square, against the Kremlin wall, is the Lenin Mausoleum. Vladimir Lenin, founder of the Soviet Union.
and its leader during the Russian Revolution of 1917. He died in 1924. The mausoleum was built a few years later. Now it attracts pilgrims from all over the country. Summer and winter, they line up for hours to see and honor the body of the man who was the Soviet Union's first leader. Elsewhere on Red Square, the Vasily Cathedral, with its eight distinctive onion-shaped domes. Legend has it that Tsar Ivan the Horrible, fearing that the architects who built this cathedral might someday build one even more distinctive for some other ruler, ordered that the architects' heads be cut off. On the other side of the Kremlin, the grave of the unknown soldier. This too is a popular spot for tourist photographers. Across from Lenin's mausoleum is a large government-owned department store called Goom. Shoppers often find shortages of many items in the Soviet Union. But here at Goom, they find practically everything. Some 85 million customers each year come to shop for food, clothing, home electronics, or souvenirs. Moscow is an industrial city too, dotted with many factories. It is also the home of the Soviet Union's largest university. One Russian word that has become meaningful not only for Russians, but for the entire world is glasnost. The word means openness. It became popularized when Mikhail Gorbachev became party chairman in 1985. He opened himself to the Russian people, spoke with them, listened to them, something previous Soviet leaders did not do. His plan, he says, is to allow small businesses, restaurants, and stores to be privately owned. He also wants to abolish, or at least cut down, the heavy Russian bureaucracy. As in other big cities, transportation in Moscow is a problem. Many commuters choose to take the subway, the metro, by far the quickest, easiest way to get around. The metro also happens to be a unique tourist attraction. Visitors come to see the works of art in a subway system widely regarded as the world's most beautifully decorated subway. The Moscow River, running through the capital city, has a constant flow of tourist boats and barges. Located beside the river is Gorky Park, a favorite playground of Muscovites. They maneuver a variety of boats on one of the lakes, or ride the great Ferris wheel, or simply stroll the gardens. There are parks sprinkled throughout the city and places for those trying to escape the heat to go for a cool dip. The only legal political party in the Soviet Union is the Communist Party, and the government discourages the practice of religion. Even so, many churches and monasteries still remain in Moscow, several of them richly decorated with paintings and icons. In one of Moscow's many theaters, tourists enjoy watching folk dancing from various Soviet republics. But the biggest tourist attraction in the city is probably the Moscow Circus. Its acrobats are world famous. And of course, the inevitable Russian bear. Mm -hmm. 
moscow with its historical buildings and golden onion domes is a throbbing vital capital city the heart the brain of that superpower known as the union of soviet socialist republics